What's up, what's good, what's happening, babies? Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, guys, I am going to be talking about my HRT journey and also talk about HRT, what are the effects to me, my previous HRT up until this date HRT, uh, my combos and whatnot. So I'm going to be talking about all my hormone replacement therapy journey. So yeah, just keep on watching. <music> Before I start this video, let us first talk about what HRT is. So, HRT or Hormone Replacement Therapy, also known as Trans Feminine Hormone Therapy, is a hormone replacement therapy and sex reassignment therapy to change the secondary sexual characteristics of a trans person from masculine to androgynous feminine. Basically, this is hormone replacement therapy from the word itself, hormone replacement. So as a male to female transgender, we are not born with enough estrogen to support the feminization to our body. So we have to undergo hormone replacement therapy so we can increase our estrogen levels and decrease our testosterone levels. So with that, we have to schedule a consultation with an endocrinologist so that he can give a combo, an HRT combo. So what is an HRT combo? HRT combo is um, one estrogen and one anti-androgen. So what are those two? So estrogen is the one that gives feminization to your body and anti-androgen which are the testosterone blockers. So these are from the word itself, the testosterone blockers. So what is estrogen and testosterone? If you haven't been listening to your science teachers, estrogen can be found in the woman's body while testosterone can be found in the male body. So for that combo, we need estrogen androgen for the feminization and anti-androgen or testosterone blocker to block our testosterones. Why do we need to block testosterones? Because the high level of testosterone it gives us um, male features, um, it gives us more excess, excessive body hair, um, armpit hair, mustache hair. So yeah, if you have lots of testosterone in your body, you will become more manly. So yeah. And on the other hand, if you have lots of estrogen in your body, you will develop more feminine features. So now speaking feminization with the use of estrogen and anti-androgen, we are now going to head on to the effects of HRT. So for the effects of HRT for transgender women, we are going to be talking about the effects and also my personal experience with this. Okay, so first one is breast development. So what I have said on my transgender transition timeline video, which is this one, I talked about starting my HRT on the year 2016. So that is not the year when I actually started it. I started on the year 2013. I was taking my year 2013 and it lasted only for six months. Why? Because I had breast developments and also my my boobies are getting bigger. Way back then, I was in, I was still in high school. Um, I am studying in a Catholic school, and we have our school uniform. And um, I started noticing that my boobies are getting bigger, and I don't want people to look at my boobies here and there, so I stopped. And also, one of the main reasons is because um, my my boobies are getting sore. It's become more tender, and when I ask to my fa my friends, um, they are talking about serious cases like. Cancer, it's like cancerous, it can lead to breast breast cancer. So yeah, I was very scared, but that is a false myth. It is not yet proven that HRT can cause breast can breast cancer. So yeah, that is not true. That's the reason why I never continued it from the year 2013. And yeah, because um, my, my boobies are getting more bigger and it's more noticeable. Fast forward to 2016, and that is when I started to fully transition. The effects were great with my boobies. Um, I have... I have bigger boobies now. It's similar to like a female's um, pre-teen um, boobies, something like that. So, so yeah, yeah, it's not that big, but trust me, it is there. I can work with it, and yeah. So next effect is the hair loss. So personally, when I permanently started my HRT year 2016, I noticed um, thinning of my hair, specifically in the armpit and in the and in my feet and in my leg part. Um, they become more thinner than before. I would still have the hair, but it's not like real, literally um, thick. It's similar to my baby hair. Yeah, it is very thin, but it's still there. And also my mustache. I get my mustache here and there, but still, um, it's not no, it's not noticeable. Next is softness of skin and decreased oiliness and acne. So. On my previous video, which is my acne journey video, I talked about doing my own HRT. I talked about concocting my own medicine for HRT. I switched to lots of pills here and there. So yeah, um, I believe that if you are used to that pill, don't change it because it might trigger your acne. 
and also those are different doses of hormones and you are not very sure on what dose you are you should specifically take so yeah you should consult your endocrinologist and we will talk about endocrinologist later after the effects next is redistribution of body fat so girl i gained weight with hrd for so i'm gonna be flashing a photo here in my screen so that is how i look like before when i started my hrt i was very thin i don't have any curvaceous body i mean i'm not very curvaceous at all but i but i do have bigger butt bigger ass than before so HRT gave me good ass and bare boobies so it helped me feminizing my body and also my face uh, before I look like this yeah I look like that but now look I have chubby cheeks I, I have fuller cheeks I have fuller breasts fuller butt next is decrease the muscle mass so before I never had any muscle because I was very thin and yeah I never had any muscle because I was very thin next is changes in the mood so mood swings uh, trans people using hrt are experiencing this um but for me i never experienced this because i don't know i don't know um some people um some of my friends experience crying out of nowhere and yeah maybe it's because of hrt but personally for me i never experienced those so yeah thank god next is decreased sex drive so what it means is that we never get erected than before so yeah we don't we don't get erections that much than we used to before so yeah we never have morning erections unlike before and also our how do i put this into word our eggs our eggs are drastically smaller than before when we weren't doing our hrt so yeah it's our penis it is it is completely smaller than it used to and next is voice change so this is my natural voice i'm not uh, making my voice up and uh, hi guys it, that's not me this is my real voice i tend to get deeper voice at time at some point but yeah this is my natural voice and when i speak in tagalog ito po ang aking boses habang nagtatagalog itong aking natural na boses habang nagtatagalog so yeah that is my voice that is my real voice i don't change it i don't make it party arte so yeah that were just some of the effects there are a lot more effects that i haven't mentioned in the video i just want this to be a very short video so if you want um to know about the effects do your research girl because that is just one of um, the effects of what i have and what i have experienced during my transition now let us move on now to endocrinologists so what is an endocrinologist an endocrinologist is a specialist with higher knowledge to hormones so an endocrinologist so an endocrinologist is the one who is going to be prescribing our hormones our antiandrogens, our estrogens and OE is the one in charge with all of those so we have to consult with an endocrinologist so with that you have to be financially prepared mentally prepared and physically prepared in the philippines it ranges for about five thousand to eight thousand pesos our city i live in the province and endocrinologists usually um are from manila who specializes with transgender people so um, endocrinologist doesn't mean that he specializes on transgender people's hormones no because other people who are straight um, have problem with their hormones so they have to consult with an endocrinologist also but that doesn't mean that an endocrinologist knows about um, trans people's transition you just be endocrinologist who specializes with trans people so yeah they are usually found in Manila but what are the steps in getting your hormones so if you're thinking that after a consultation with your endocrinologist he's going to be giving you your hormones no girl that's not how it works first he's going to be referring to the psychologist because you need to be very sure that you are you have gender dysphoria that you are a woman trapped in a man's body and you want to transition so usually um when you talk to the psychologist as from what i heard from my chan sisters they start they talk about um, when did you started to know that you are a female so yeah that is just one of the questions that a psychologist is going to ask you but yeah you need to be very sure that you are going to be doing this um, not just because you want to be pretty, not just because you want to compete with other transgender, but because you, you love who you are as a woman. So yeah, you need to be very mentally prepared, physically prepared, and financially prepared when going to an endocrinologist. So next is, after the psycho psychologist, you have to undergo lots of tests, namely blood tests, kidney and liver tests. Why? Because um, you're taking up lots of hormones. It might give you oral hormones or injectable hormones. So with that, it's going to be damaging your liver and your kidneys. So they have to go to lots of serious tests before starting to give your hormones. And after those tests, here is the fun part. He is going to be giving your dosage of hormones. So at first, he might give you a low dosage or maybe a higher dosage 
to start off it's a case-to-case -case basis it depends on your testosterone level and your estrogen level so it depends on your body i'm not saying that um, you should start with low dosage or you should start with high dosage you have to ask your endocrinologist after having your initial hormones you need to go you need to have follow-up checkups because after your first few months on hrt the doctor will run through tests again and see if that hormone is doing something good to your body if it is um, increasing your estrogen or it's still the same than before so yeah you need to do follow-up checkups so he will know that if he is going to be giving a, um, a higher dosage or a lower dosage so next the question is why am i talking about going to an endocrinologist and still i never went through one first is because it is expensive i cannot afford that next is i it is far away from our house it is far away from our house um, endocrinologists um, cannot be found in our province i am from batangas in the philippines and usually the ones who specializes with trans care um, endocrinologists are usually found in manila so yeah it's very far from our house and i cannot afford it so yeah so you watching you should not skip ads because i want to go to an endocrinologist and have my safe hormones because up until now i am still self-medicating myself and it is very bad it is very harmful and dangerous to your body and yeah so now let us talk about my hormones and what hormones did i use what hrt did i use so year 2016 i started my hormones so i started with microfield again just like what i used 2013 but i think it never gave me that bigger boobies than before so i switched to lots of um bcp so what is bcp bcp is birth control pills so mainly a micro pill marvelon trust um althea diane so yeah i i switched to lots of hormones to from micro pill to lady to althea so yeah i've tried lots of hormones from the year 2016 and it lasted for about a year switching up to lots of bcps next year 2017 to year 2019 i used the yan 35 or oc35 um, why do i use those two because the yan 35 and oc35 are just the same um dosage um the yan 35 is more expensive oc35 is more cheaper so if i have extra budget i would switch to the yan 35 and if i don't have enough budget i would switch to oc35 in between those years i do progesterone shots which is the phenokinone f it is not a weekly dosage of injection but yeah i inject here and there in that span of two years so year 2016 to year 2017 i developed hormonal acne because it's the result from switching one hrt to another hrt because your body couldn't handle that much dosage from switching to this hormone and this hormone that's the reason why i have a severe acne breakout before so yeah when i switched to dian 35 and oc35 my acne isn't really like before when i was using um Micropail, Althea, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's a higher dosage of estrogen and anti-androgen. Maybe it's that it's because of that. I'm not sure, but yeah, maybe it's just my mind thinking that it is working. It is making my skin clear because of that. I, mean, I don't know. But yeah, my skin got more better than before. I mean, I still have pimples here and there, but yeah, it's not comparable to what it looked like before year 2016 to year 2017. So yeah, fast forward from year 2019 up until this date, I am now using a combo. So what is combo again? An estrogen and an anti-androgen. So for my estrogen, I am taking progiliton. So this is how it looked like. And the pills look like this. So yeah, that's how it looked like. This is 21 tablets and each tablet contains 2 milligrams of estradiol valerie. Next is for my testosterone blockers, I am using the Altactone 25 mg. This is Spironolactone 25 mg. This is how it looked like, something like that. So your question is why did I switch to these from the Young 35? So from what I have researched, BCP is not good to your body. It's very harmful and it is not advisable from the chronologist abroad, specifically in the US. Dian 35 is banned over there in the US because it is harmful to your body because of the testosterone blocker which is the cyberterone acetate it can really heavily damage your liver and yeah that is one of the one of the main reasons why it is banned in the US I joined a group in the Philippines which is the HRD um, Kadyo Sarap, Kadyo Sarap group and we have nurse Chrissy over there she is a registered nurse she is a transgender woman she talks about switching to bioidentical hormones and one of the bioidentical hormones that she recommended is progiliton uh, that is one of the main reasons why i switched to this and also 
I am now living here in the Middle East and one of the main reasons why I switched this is because it is very cheaper compared to Dayan 35. A Dayan 35 hormone is equal to two pairs of these. So yeah, I cannot afford that and yeah, I switched to these. And it relatively did a good job in feminizing my body and also more safer. I mean, HRD is not safe at all, but compared to Dayan 35, this is more safer. I mean, you will get very beautiful effects with Dayan 35 because it's a potent drug. It is a potent pill. But what about your insides, girl? You are beautiful and glowing on the outside, but what about in the inside? So yeah, it is very risky to use BCP or birth control pills. So you should stay away from it as much as possible. And I would like to highly recommend you buy identical hormones. So if you are if you are a little bit confused on what hormones you should take as a beginner, I suggest you to click the link down below on the description box and click the link, uh, which is a Facebook group. Um, it's a Just Start Up group. It is a group specifically for trans people in the Philippines. Yeah, we have lots of nurses over there that can really help us with our transitioning. Also, I'm going to be linking Nurse Chrissy's YouTube channel down below on my description box. She is um, a YouTuber also. She makes YouTube videos in regards with the trans people and their concerns with their HRT. So yeah, you should go check those two links out. So yeah, that is probably much all of it. And um, I'm sorry if this, is, if this isn't a very detailed video. I promise you this is... Um, just what I have knowledge with. These are just the things that I know of with my research and also These are the things that I searched with Google. So hi Google. Thanks for the help So girls do your research as often as possible because this can really help you with your transitioning if you couldn't afford your endocrinologist Interact with your trans sisters. Next is if you have the money, if you have the budget, go to an endocrinologist because girl self-medicating is bad it can lead to a lot of serious damage to your body i mean hrd it can be very deceiving you are beautiful on the outside but girl how about in the inside maybe you are slowly decaying so go to an endocrinologist be safe than sorry so you have to be very prepared in doing hrd because some of the effects are irreversible so you should be very sure that you are doing this because you need to do this not because you want to do this need because this is a necessity for your own gender dysphoria need because this might complete on who you are so yeah those are just my tips and don't skip ads so i can go to an endocrinologist also okay so yeah that is it for today's video guys i hope that enlightened all of you and i hope that you learned something from this video if i said something wrong if i did say that is not correct the comment section is open please correct me if i am wrong because we are all not perfect so yeah please give a like comment down below your video suggestions subscribe if you haven't and on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my updates so yeah thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you on my next video bye